Dog, the Dog Award um, by myself, Caroline O'Brien. I come from the Irish Mission in the Belfast Church. And this is obviously a new award, so I'm very excited. I love dogs and I love cats, but dogs, I have a little dog and I'll tell you about her later. So this is what we need to do today. We need to do read and discuss different parts of the Bible. Genesis 126 and Proverbs. And then we're gonna go through the different um, requirements about dogs. And as I say, Bogdan and Natalie will let us know when you have any comments or any or any um, questions at all. So the first verse we're going to look at is Genesis 1 verse 26 and we're doing it from the New Living Translation. Genesis 1 26 then God said let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So what does this mean? It's telling us lots of things really in this one verse. It's telling us that God is our creator. He made not just us, he made the world and everything in it. He made all the animals, the fish, the sea, and the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky. He made everything. But he also made us different to everything else, because he made us to be like him. He made us to be in his image, which means we are special. And he put us in charge over the fish, the birds, the livestock, all the animals. He wants us to look after them. So he put us in charge. He made us in his image. So it's very, very special for us to be able to look after the animals that he created. The next verse that they've talked about here is Proverbs 12, verse 10. Again, in the New Living Translation, it is the godly care for their animals, but the wicked are always cruel. We are children of God. We are godly people. So we are going to care for the animals that he has put us in charge of. We don't want to be wicked and we do not want to be cruel because that is not going to please God. The animals need us to be good to them. So the next requirement, I'm sure, has anybody heard anything like the saying, a, go a dog is a man's best friend? Dog is a faithful and loyal friend to all of us. He loves, dogs love us unconditionally because they are a loyal pet. They love to be fed, love to be walked, love to be played with, but they will also return that love by being our best friend. And everybody loves to have a best friend, don't they? And after the dog is a man's best friend, it doesn't mean that it's not for, it's for everybody. It's not just for men. It means for all of us, for children, for girls, for boys, for mums and for dads, and for grannies and granddads. They are our best friends. Now I want to tell you a story. But first of all, this is just for those afterwards who um, maybe missed out on, on, on the afternoon programme, they can listen to the story after today. But the, the story I want to tell you is about one dog, but many dogs at the same time. It's a true story. And it's a true story that happened in 1925. And these are real pictures of the dogs. It was a dog called Balto. And he and many other dogs and a team of sled dogs did a very dangerous mission, traveled many, many miles across the Alaskan countryside to get special medicine to save a family and a village of people. So we're gonna tell you the story about Balto and the Great Serum Run. This is from the book, The Great Hero, The Greatest Hero. And Balto was a dog, a big sled dog. He was the lead dog in a sled team that worked for a gold mining company. And Balto was a clever and strong dog because to be a part of that uh, team, he had to be strong and clever. And in 1925, in a village of Nome in Alaska, now Alaska is up at the top of, on the northwest side of America, and it borders with Canada but as you can see in the pictures and I'm sure you've read in lots of other books and stuff Alaska is in this village Nome is covered in snow most of the year round 
So it is a very, very cold place. And because of the heavy, deep snow, it is very, very difficult to get about in the winter. So they didn't have cars that could travel. They had horses and carts wouldn't work. And even the trains couldn't get through the snow in the winter. They relied on dogs like Balto, dog sled teams to transport food and produce and tra travel from place to place. So in the winter, as I say, the only way to travel was by dog sled and his team. And Balto's owner was a man called Gunner. And he led these dogs. I want to tell you about something that happened in January in, in Nome in 1925, when two young children got quite sick. These two children got sick and their mums and dads called upon the doctor to come and look at them. And the doctor seen the children and he was so worried because these children had a disease called diphtheria. Now diphtheria is very, very serious and they needed special medicine, which the doctor didn't have. But not only was it going to be very serious for these two children, it was going to be serious for the whole village of Nome. The doctor needed this medicine. Now, a hospital, one of the nearest hospitals in another town called Anchorage had the medicine, but that medicine was 800 miles away in the middle of winter. How were they going to get it? So they tried their best. The hospital in Anchorage put the medicine on a train and sent it on its way, but it had 800 miles to travel and only got as far as 100 miles when the train got stuck in the snow and it could go no further. They tried digging it out, but it wasn't happening. So the people of Nome were worried they were not going to get this medicine to save their village. So they had a special town meeting and in that town meeting, they thought of different ideas of how to get the medicine. And what happened then, they decided, well, should we try a relay race with the dogs? We've all done relay races at school sports days and it's great fun, but this was going to be a relay race that took them 700 miles. And it was going to be teams of dogs from one end side of Alaska to the other. So that's what they did. They put out a special call, the mayor put out a call and Gunner and his dog, Balto heard the call for dog sled teams to come forward to help with the race. And that's what they did. They signed up. Gunnar and Balto were going to be at the second last spot on the race to get the medicine back to Nome. So on the 27th of January, 1925, the race began. There was 21 dog teams, so there was lots and lots of dogs that took part in this story, but Balto was the, the hero. The first team collected the medicines from the train and wrapped it up in fur so that it wouldn't freeze in the cold, cold winter months, and off they went. But the journey was so difficult for each of the teams because the weather was so bad it was probably one of the worst storms they'd had for many, many years. And all they had were stuck in the snow. The dogs got frozen feet and the leaders had to get out and pull. And, and it just was getting very, very difficult. But Gunnar and Balto were waiting their turn. They were very, very anxious to get going. And they waited and waited. And it took two days longer than they thought but they stood and waited they were ready they didn't want to keep the, the keep the medicine waiting so they had their sled packed they had food on it they had blankets they had all they needed so that when they got the medicine they could just take off with their team and that's what they did they stood and waited and as soon as they got going they ran and ran but on their journey in their 30, 32 miles that they had to do, they were coming across deep snow that the dogs got stuck in and Gunnar had to dig them out. But Balto kept them calm by not panicking. And Balto had to save them from different times when the ice was too thin and they was, wouldn't take them across the thin ice in case the sled 
got stuck and didn't want that to happen because then they'd sink and the medicine would be ruined. So they're going to rely on Balto being the strongest and the cleverest dog. And Gunnar looked after the dogs too. He had to make sure that their feet didn't get frozen and that they had enough food and water. And as they traveled, they came to the last stop for them. They would hand the medicine over and the last team of dogs was to take the medicine to Nome. But when they got there, there was no lights on and nobody was there. They were very tired. They traveled for 36 miles, but they couldn't, they didn't have time to stop. They just kept going when they realized there was nobody ready. And they traveled on through the night and traveled until they got to the village of Nome. And at that point, they were exhausted, but they got the medicine there and they had traveled for over 20 hours without stopping. But the medicine was given to the doctor who was delighted and he was able to give the medicine then to the sick people and children in Nome and the people were saved. And to say a big thank you to Balto for what he did, he, they built a statue which is still in Central Park in New York and the children love to go and visit. Balto the statue to remember the hero dog but we have to also remember he was one of lots of dogs but he pushed through at the very last to get the medicine to know. So dogs are amazing animals. They are clever and they are very loyal but they need us to help look after them. So what I'd like us to look at now and perhaps um, if you want to put into the chat some some ideas of what do dogs need us to do? And maybe Bogdan or Natalie could let us know what, what I do. Have you any suggestions as to what dogs need for us to care for them? They need lots and lots of food, healthy food, two good strong meals a day, and they need healthy dog treats. It's important for the dogs to have healthy dog treats so that they don't get sick. So dogs love their food and they love to eat our food too. But healthy food and two good meals a day. And water. They also need some water. Like They're like us really. We need a healthy diet and we need water to keep hydrated. And we need water to, if the food is too dry, they need water to help with their shiny coat, um, for their skin, for energy. Um, and they also, as you can see here, they like to play with the water if it gets too hot. They need the water to keep them cool in the sun. And like us, they love a lovely warm cosy bed and somewhere warm to live. So dogs are very, very, they, they, they do like their comforts and they like so a kennel for outside, but inside definitely somewhere cosy and warm. and plenty of exercise. And as Bogdan's going to do with his later Fitness Fun Award, dogs love to have some fitness fun too. They love to run about, they love to play, they love to swim, but they also love whenever their owners play with them, play fetch, run around, tug of war, lots of things. Dogs need exercise and it also helps them be better behaved because they don't get so bored if they've got plenty of exercise. And also dogs love to play. And if anybody has had dogs, you will know how much they love to play. They will jump around, they will play with balls and each other. And two dogs playing together, they love to play tumble all over the place. And they like to play fetch, but they especially love it when we take the time with them and have fun with them. And like us too, they need to be washed and cleaned and kept kept clean and their mouths kept clean. It's important for a dog's coat to be getting regular washes and trimmed. Um, you can see the difference of the dog before and after it's trimmed there and that one. It is important for them because it helps with their coat and their skin and as well as that their teeth and gums need to be kept clean. So their snacks and their diet will have a big big part of how healthy their fur and their teeth are. And this is a very important one, albeit not a nice one. Whenever we have a dog and we will take them for a wee walk, we need to clean up after them. It's very, very important that we don't leave our dog's mess in the streets because it's not nice for their neighbours and it's not safe for the people coming behind us. But we need to also make sure we bag it up and put it in the bin 
and wash our hands well. And training. Nobody likes to have to go to school, but dogs even need to go to school because they have to learn how to interact with other dogs and they have to learn how to be nice to young children and they have to learn how to walk beside you, how not to bite. They have to learn lots and lots of things, but they learn it when they're a puppy and it's part, you can, it can be a part of a game, but it also shows our dogs how much we love them when we train them. And the Bible tells us that we show our love to our children when we, when we show discipline and teach them. And it's the same with the dog. They need to know that they're loved by being trained properly. So how can dogs help people? I'm, I seem to have a problem with my mic and I'm not really, I can't hear you both and when you speak. No, but we can hear you. I can't hear it at all, sorry. Mm. Mm. If you can join in. So how can dogs help people? There's lots of jobs that dogs can do that will help us all out. I'm just going to keep working through this, Bogdan, and if there's any responses or anything, you can just let me know in chat. So dogs can, can help us in lots and lots and lots of different ways. So they're great company, but for people, they can be also a great support. So this is a dog here for people who are blind or partially sighted. So a seeing dog or a guide dog will help someone who can't see where they're going. Like they will be able to come along and tell the person when it's safe to cross the road, if there's an object in the way so they don't trip and fall over it. And I bet you at this moment in time, the cost of, a, of training a guide dog, is it's not cheap and that's why they do a lot of fundraising. But in the Irish Guide Dogs Association for the Blind, it costs about 5,000 euro per puppy per year. That's a lot of money when the wee, those wee dogs are needed for their lifetime to be trained. In England, to have a guide dog from puppy to till its retirement, it can cost about 60,000 pounds to train it, support it and keep it. And one blind owner could have maybe up to eight different dogs in their lifetime. So that's a lot of money. So it's a very, very worthy charity because they will help someone have lots and lots of opportunities in their life when they can't see because the dog will be their eyes. Another thing that dogs can do to help is be protection. They can, they can protect not just people, but places. So a lot of dogs will be used as guard dogs. And these guard dogs will look after and protect buildings, property, people from other intruders, from other animals. And they will also need special training. Nobody wants a guard dog that they can't, that they'd be scared of themselves. They want the dog to be trained to protect them, but not to hurt people. They want them just to sort of hold back the intruders until the police come, but they would need to be well trained. And another way for the dogs to help people is police dogs. And I'm not sure if anybody has ever seen the dogs out helping the police in their jobs, but they have a very, very important role. And it will be things they will help look after catch criminals. They will help control crowds if there's big, big crowds of people. They will also help if there's somebody lost or to find um, drugs and stuff. We're going to talk about that in a wee minute. But they are a very specially trained dog and they work with the police and they will work um, alongside a partner and be, they have a great relationship and be very loyal to each other. And mountain rescue, search and rescue dogs are amazing creatures too. They have been trained especially to find people who are lost, maybe up the mountain or if there's been um, an earthquake or a collapsed building, they will call in the search and rescue teams to look for people. And the dogs are trained not just because they're small and can get into all sorts of wee places that we can't, but it's because they're clever. They have a really good sense of smell. So they can smell things before we can. 
they can hear things before we can. So even if they can only hear a small noise, they will be able to pick it up before a man or a child could. So they are great animals to be used for search and rescue. And this one, I love this one. I'm a nurse, so I like to see things and animals that are used to help when people are sick. And a therapy dog is amazing. I, dogs can be so relaxing. They are known to bring, it, bring people who are very sick or very anxious to make them feel better. They help you relax. They help take away some of the pain that a person might be suffering. And like children and adults alike would love to see a dog that comes in. So therapy dogs have lots of roles in the lives of those who aren't feeling well. So you can bring them into a hospital, into homes, into schools, to libraries, different places, and they will help. So even whenever there's been a really bad situation in a village or a town, and they've brought in the search and rescue dogs to maybe find people that have been missing, and then afterwards they'll bring in therapy dogs that will help the people heal and get over the tragedies that there has been. So these dogs play a really, really important role to help us all. And this one is good too, for two different reasons. The detection dogs work well with the police, but they also work with scientists and the health service. So detection dogs are trained to sniff, sniff out things that are, that shouldn't be there. So there at the bottom there, you'll see the dog sniffing the suitcase. So they would be used in police, with the, by the police in airports and different places, maybe to sniff out people transporting drugs or even explosives and bombs. So they will keep us safe. Okay. And the dog at the top is a medical detection dog, which means he has been trained to sniff out maybe diseases, cancer, um, they're even training dogs at the moment to try and sniff out the COVID-19 virus. So they're, they're using dogs to try and find things that we struggle to find because we don't have the sense of smell that God gave them. So dogs are very, very useful to people and they need us to be useful to them. So that's why they're a loyal companion. They will help us if we look after them like God asked us to. So the next wee bit, I hope this is going to work now because of the, my microphone doesn't seem to be working well here at the moment, but the sounds that dogs make. So I can't hear you, but I'm sure your mums and dads and your families can hear you. But at the moment, I'm sure if you took a wee minute and just all barked like a dog at home and let everybody hear what sort of sound a dog makes. I have a little dog called Princess. I should have a picture for her at the end. And Princess makes the strangest bark because she doesn't have a tongue. So Princess lost her tongue as a puppy and she had to learn how to eat and drink very differently, but also meant she couldn't bark right. So she makes a little sound, a little bit like we call her the little gremlin because she kind of just grumbles and groans and sometimes gets a proper bark. But these signs that are going to have some next, some of them are a little scary. So if you're scared of dogs, just, just switch your sound off when I tell you to. And if you don't worry, they're only signs. There's no dogs coming out. So barking. Dogs bark for lots and lots of reasons. They have happy barks. And this little dog here is ready to play. You can see by the way she's all tucked down. She's ready to play. We can tell a dog is ready to play when they wiggle, wag their tail, their eyes, their ears are all, all excited and a dog will bark. Do we know why a dog will bark? The dogs, they like to bark for attention. What sort of attention would a dog want? Well, like anybody, like we all want attention, but if I barked, I think I'd get looked at like there was something wrong with me. But dogs will bark when they want fed, when they want out, when they're bored, when they just want to say hello to the people passing by in the street or when the postman comes. My sister Heather's dog, she had a dog and he, oh, she did not like the postman. So when she barked, she barked very loudly at the postman. But my wee princess barks just to say hello to everybody that walks past. Now this one's a bit, this one's a bit hard to listen to, but you try and guess why this little dog makes this sound. Can you even see now, is it ready to... It's very loud, isn't it? 
See? Oh, that poor wee dog. Now, why? Oops. Try and stop it again. The wee dog is yelping. And dogs will only yelp like that. Not because they're happy or hungry, but because they're sore. So we, we have funny noises we make when we're sore or when we have a lot of pain. We'll cry or we'll, oh, that's sore. But the dog will make a yelp like that and it isn't a nice sound at all. So dogs will yelp when they're very sore. And it's important for our dogs for us to recognize the different sounds that they make and they're trying to tell us something. This next one is whining. I'm sure none of you would whine for anything. Children don't like to whine and mummies and daddies don't like to whine, but dogs can whine sometimes. So listen to this one and tell me why you think a dog would whine. Ooh, poor dog. <laughs> oh, that poor dog's are whining because they're stressed. Dogs get stressed just like we do. And they'll get stressed for lots of different things. They might get stressed because they're alone. They're afraid of where they are. Uh, they might get stressed because they're worried about their owners. We used to have a wee dog that used to get very stressed when you put him across a bridge. He didn't like going heights, across heights. And if we walked across the bridge, he would lie down and whine and you have to lift him up and carry him across. So we knew whenever he made that noise that he was stressed and scared. Now, this is another one that's a little bit oh, loud. It's why does a dog howl? I'm sure you've heard dogs howl at times. And if you have a dog and they hear this one, they might howl with it. Right, that's very loud. So dogs howl. Have you ever heard a dog howl? Well, dogs will howl. I wonder why a dog would howl. Dogs will howl because they're lonely and they're looking for, oops. Switch it off, it keeps telling me that it's lonely. Dogs are lonely, they'll howl. And when they howl, you find one dog will howl, a dog that hears them will howl back. And that's them telling them you're not on your own. We're all here together. And the dogs will communicate with each other in that way. Now this next one is a scary one, guys. So if you don't like dogs and you find it scary, don't listen. This is when dogs growl. And do you know what to notice about this dog? You can see his scary teeth. And dogs, he doesn't look very playful. He doesn't look happy. He looks scary. So listen to this one just for a second. And this is what a growling dog sounds like. Ooh. I'm not going to have that one on too long because it's a bit scary. So dogs will growl for, oh, just a few things. And it's usually because they're angry. And they're giving you a warning. If you hear a dog growl, it, you don't want to be touching that dog. So what we need to, we know they're growling. Oops. It keeps growling at me again. They're angry. And dogs, we don't want to go near an angry dog. So we need to learn the noises that a dog makes and what it means to us. When they're barking, they're looking for attention. When they're whining, they're stressed. When they're yelping, they're sore. When they're howling, they're lonely. And when they're growling, they're angry and giving you a warning. But we don't just need to look at, the, at what they're saying. We need to look at their ears and their face and their tail and what they're doing. That, all those things will let us know that a dog is communicating with us and with each other. And that's where training comes into play because you want to train your dog to be a happy and behaved dog so it doesn't hurt anybody. And it is very, very important that we never leave our dogs unattended without adult supervision when there's young children about. So in your worksheets that um, Natalie has, has them 
um, we're going to, I want you to, you'll see there's a wee, wee quiz, we draw the lines for the different sounds of the dogs and the, what they mean. So you can complete all of that before we move to this next stage, which is identify 10 different breeds. And this is a wee bit more complicated because I can't hear what, what's being said. I was hoping that you could tell me or guess suggestions for the dog breeds. But so the first one, oh, right, okay. The first one here, does, if we can guess this one is, does anybody know what it is? It's a golden retriever. Now, what can I tell you about golden retrievers? You'd often see them being used as a guide dog or a therapy dog because they are just such pleasant, happy dogs. They're easy to train. And they were originally bred in Scotland. There's a good few dogs that, that we're going to look at, a couple of dogs from Scotland. So the golden retriever or Labrador is a beautiful, happy dog. They need a lot of grooming, though. Now, here's another wee dog. This wee dog, too, if anybody has any ideas, put it into the chat. This is another dog that needs a lot of grooming. It needs its fur looked after, but those ears, lovely, lovely big ears. But you know what happens to this wee dog? He's a Cocker Spaniel. Whenever he eats, those ears will get caught in the food. So whenever you own a dog like that, you need to keep the ears out of their food and water. Otherwise they get very, very messy and can get a bit, a bit smelly. Now this is a lovely dog. I had trouble working out whether this there was two breeds of dog this could have been in my mind, but I know what it is. But it's a mixture between two different dogs. Again, both lovely. And it was originally bred in the 1950s in Australia, but it's very, very popular here. And it's a mixture between a Labrador and a Poodle. Now, some people who are allergic to dogs, so some of these dogs here are actually good because they don't shed as much fur as others. So if you were allergic to dogs, this would be quite a good one. Now, another, oh, this one here is lovely and scary at the same time because look at the size of his jaw. And you'd probably find this type of dog, which was first bred in Germany, is good as a guard dog or a police dog because of the, the nature they are. They're a Rottweiler. And they are, even though they're a domestic dog, they used to be used for herding big, big herds of cattle. But now you'll see them more search and rescue and police dogs if they're well trained. Now, this is a lovely wee cute dog. And I'm sure everybody knows that this wee dog originated from Scotland. And it's quick and clever and very quick to learn and very hard to keep clean, I'm sure. But it's a wee West Highland Terrier. They do like to bark. And they were originally used to sort of chase around sort of mice and rats off farms. But they are a beautiful wee dog. And here is a big dog, which is a bit like the Rottweiler. It was also first, first bred in Germany. And it is also very much used now as a police dog, a guard dog. But it used to be used as well for herding sheep and cattle. And it is the German Shepherd. Or some people, there's one side effect with lots of different names, German Shepherd or Alsatian, but they are a very, very well behaved dog when they're trained right. And this one here now, this is my brother in law is a sheep farmer, so he's always got lots of these dogs about. These are actually border collies, and they are actually one of the cleverest dogs. They learn very, very quickly. And also very, they love to do acrobats and different things. You'll see them in lots of talent shows, but when you see these dogs, the way they, they respond, when the farmers teach them with the whistles and herding the sheep, they are extremely playful, but they are a beautiful dog. Now, I think this one is very, very cute, but uh, my family told me I got the name of this one wrong, but I Googled it again and again. They came up as a, Boston Bulldog, but they all said it looked like a boxer, but on the website it says it's a bulldog. But as a, as a Boston Bulldog, they are a, just a happy, happy dog and a good pet to have because they don't need an awful lot of grooming and they have a good sense of humour. So dogs can be very, very funny as well as, as loyal. Now, this here dog, if anybody has ever seen one, I'd love to, I would love to know if anybody ever has owned one because they're so big. 
But this is a dog that was originally bred up in the Alps because it was used for search and rescue and carrying medicines. It's a big St. Bernard. And these are heavy dogs, but they are very gentle and caring. They are just nature's, God, God has just given dogs so many different personalities. And this is the type of wee dog that I have at the moment. Um, and it is a little terrier, which is just a companion dog, a Yorkshire terrier. And these dogs are tiny. Sometimes they're that small, you could put them in your pocket. But they are very, very friendly and are often seen as little companion dogs, especially to people who can't get out much. They do need a lot of care with their coat and stuff, but they are still very, very much a companion dog. So that's a lot, a lot of information there for you to do. And on your worksheets, there'll be pictures of dogs. And there will also be um, places for you to write the names of the breeds of the dogs so you can remember to recognise them. But if you'd also wanted a list on your sheet, if you wanted your favourite dog, and maybe there's a wee picture to colour, list your favourite dog and why it's your favourite. Because there's lots and lots of different breeds out there. And you also need to, to get your award, you need to do a wee craft. Now, everybody has different ideas of what is a good craft and what is not. So I like to give you all the choice. I don't mind what craft you make, as long as it's dog themed. And some people love to be, oh, very, very artistic, and some people don't. So there's lots of options you can do. So on this screen, you can see different ideas. There's paper plate dogs. You could make a dog from a paper plate, colour it, whatever breed a dog you want. I like the wee Dalmatian paper cup. We can make it as all as spotty and its wee face. And even on the bottom there, you can see the, the, car, the paper folded to make a slinky type dog. But if you have plaster scene or clay or Lego, you can make a dog out of them. You could color a picture of dog or chalk. And my children used to love drawing pictures in the driveway with chalk. So you could even draw a picture of the dog on the and just take a picture of it and send it to us. If you're like me and you like to make things out of wool, you could make pom-pom dog. There's lots and lots and lots of ideas of how you could make a dog themed craft this week and send it in your pictures so that we can see how wonderful it is. And I really, really hope you have fun with it um, and sharing it. And the last I have to say is to thank you all for being with me. I'm sorry that my microphone wasn't working to get all the, the interaction, but this is my wee dog princess. I just wanted to tell you a wee short, short story about princess. But princess needs a haircut, as you can see, but princess doesn't like getting her hair cut. It's a very stressful time for her. But princess is nearly 11 years old. She's quite, a, she's getting old. And princess came to, to us when she was about seven. We adopted her from my niece who was moving to London. And, and she couldn't find a home for her because, because of her having no tongue, she needs a little bit extra care and attention. She can't clean her own face after she eats. But we had another dog at the time and you called him Woody. And Woody was a, Cairn, uh, a West Highland Terrier cross. And he was lonely because his sister had died a few years ago. And we thought maybe lonely Woody and Princess would be good friends. And um, Princess came to live with us. And before long, Woody used to come along and clean her face. So she couldn't clean the food off her own face, but Woody cleaned her face for her. And now Woody got old. He, he died two years ago. And since then, Princess has been queen of the manor. She has been in charge of the household. She gets her face cleaned with baby wipes and all sorts at the moment. And when we brought a cat home last year, we thought, oh dear. But Princess became mother to the cat. So she taught the cat how to play and she taught the cat how to clean up. And it's amazing how the animals look after each other. They recognize a need just like we do. God has created a sense of caring within these animals that we should learn and love to appreciate. So I'd like to just leave that wee picture with you and thank you very much for listening. And I hope you all have great fun this week doing your craft and sharing them with us all. Thank you very okay. much. Okay.